Hello, hello everyone. Welcome to Ed Talk TV, conversations worth having. I'm your host, Ed Troxel, and if you're new to me, welcome. Let me ask you, have you ever felt bogged down in your business or overwhelmed with the technology? If so, then you are in the right place. Here on the show, we talk about business, tech, and the user experience, and we help you overcome some, not all, but some of your challenges. Now, if you're wanting to dive deeper and get answers to your specific questions, as well as fast track your business success, you're going to want to join the HeyEd Network. You can learn more about that later after the show at heyednetwork.com, and that is where we'll take you to the next level. So today, let's talk about email and what you should not be doing in your email. Now, some of you may already have guessed it, and feel free, even if you're watching the replay, to let me know. Hey, Tammy, welcome. Hey, I see what you did there. Hey, Ed. <laughs> uh, some of you are probably already know certain things about email and what you should not be doing. In fact, let me ask you, even if you're watching the replay, I want to know this, so tune in. Show up, deliver, and engage. Uh, for those of you watching, what should you not do with email? And, and that's a loaded question, I realize that. I'm curious what's on your thoughts, what's on your brain right now. Uh, by the way, I've done a few lives today, so not just for my business. Uh, so. I'm a little tongue twisted, bear with me if you're a uh, first timer here. And that's the beauty of live, is we can do that because it's real life and that's what people love, to know that it happens to all of us. So what is something that you should not be doing in email? Now I bring this up because I wanna show you an example and I created these examples by the way, uh, based off of something I received and uh, because I didn't wanna show the, the actual email. So I created samples and I'm going to show you side by side comparison of what one looked like and what one should look like. Now, of course, when it comes to email, we all, as you guys will see, once you start sharing what your thoughts are and what you should not be doing with email, you'll start seeing all of these uh, different examples and what people should be doing and shouldn't be doing. And I will say that I was fortunate enough to have one of my internships way back when uh, at a magazine before I created my own magazine uh, where the photo editor had taught me how to properly do email. And I'm so grateful, shout outs to Sam if you ever watch this, uh, I've always been so grateful and continue to be for you teaching me that because it's prepared me for real life and it's helped me teach others how to properly do email and why I love my inbox so much and why you can love your inbox even more. So let's take a look at the examples. I'm going to switch my screen over here to show you. And I want you guys to look. There's an email. They're almost identical, okay, in terms of the content. These are dummy emails I made. On the left, you have one. On the right, you have another. Now, based off of what you're seeing, which one stands out to you? Which one do you like? Which one do you not like? Left or right? And it should be the same on your end. Now I bring this up, and, and there's really no wrong answer. I mean, you could you could like the one that I'm going to talk about, and it I'll be like, I'm not going to be, my feelings aren't going to be hurt. It's okay. Uh, Tammy says, don't spam with your email. Yes, that's a big one. Don't spam. So here's the thing. We're going to work our way down here. The subject line. It should be crystal clear what's going to be in your email. Now I'm gonna kinda of get on my high horse here because email is kind of a pet peeve of mine, so bear with me. But what you're going to do is you're only, let's start at the top, the to field. You're only gonna send it to the person or persons that absolutely need to have it. If they don't need it, don't send it, because it's pointless. Same thing with reply all. Don't reply all unless it's absolutely necessary. Why? Why should you not reply all unless it's absolutely necessary? You tell me in the comments, even if you're watching a replay. So only send it to the right person. Only CC it, which means copy the right person or the right people that need to have it or have requested to have it. And then BCC. That's where you can put in the email address, but it won't show up when people open it. That's an important one if you are sending an email to 
new people who don't know each other, maybe you're connected to them, but they don't know each other and it's sensitive information, you don't want to put everyone's email address in the CC field because guess what? We can all see it. Therefore, there's no privacy. If you put in the BCC, there's privacy. I can't see it. Only you, the sender, can see it. So it's very important to pay attention to who you're sending it to and which line you're putting their email address on. That's a big one. Tammy says, pet peeve, please learn the difference between CC and BCC. <laughs> exactly. I know. I'm telling you guys, this is a hot topic. It's very hot. And if it's not, it should be for you, especially for business. So now we're down to the subject line. The subject line should include whatever you're going to talk about in the body of the email. Subject line, body of the email. They should match. Shouldn't be anything extra. Sometimes there might be, and it's very rare. Keep it to a minimum. So your subject line should be short, sweet, to the point. As you can see here, I put X projects. You can put in whatever project you want, but I put X project is due May 5th, or sorry, May 3rd, tomorrow, in parentheses. Now notice that over here, due May, tomorrow is all, is all caps, but over here, it's not. So there's a difference there. And, and frankly, I really don't care when it comes to the subject line, if you're putting it in all caps or not. The body of the email, that's where we're going next, and that is where I care and why you should too. So down here, you can see there's a lot going on in this email. It's short, so I will give credit to myself that this example is short, but I guarantee you if you're writing this, if you were the person writing this email, this would not be short. So I, I simplified it for us because I want us to see that it needs to be short, but Keep your email bodies short and sweet with bullet points. Why? Why do we want to keep our email short and sweet with bullet points? What, what's the purpose of that? Tammy says, also, people can snag those other addresses on CCs and use those email addresses to send spam. Exactly, Tammy. Great point. That is why I tell you guys to pay attention to where you're putting the email addresses because you may not be thinking you may just put them all in the CC and send it and not realize that somebody on that list might not be as nice as you or anybody else and might swipe all those email addresses and throw them to spam. And then it's a whole mess and guess what? You're the sender, so it's your fault technically. So you don't want to be put in that position. Now, for the body of the email, you can see on the left here, there's a lot going on. We got color, we got highlights, we got bold, we got caps, we got all this stuff going on. And then you can see over here, we have a nice clean email. Now, I'm curious, which one are you more likely to read all the way through? The left or the right? For me personally, it's going to be the right. The one on the left, for me, don't let this change your, your judgment, you let me know, uh, but for me, the one on the left is so busy and has so much going on, my eyes don't know where to go, and I don't even want to read your email. I immediately want to throw it in the trash. Even if it's important for me, I still want to put it in the trash. So that's a huge reason why you need to pay attention to formatting your emails. You want to make sure that you keep them short and sweet. You don't want to have these lengthy paragraphs because why? One, nobody's going to read them, but two, they're opening them up on their phones. They're not opening up your email, most likely, on a 50-inch TV or a screen. Most people start with their phones. So if you think about the phones and the tablets, iPads, iPhones, Androids, all of that, most are 15 inches or less, probably less than 12 inches of screen. So when you put in a ton of text in your email, guess what happens when they look at it on that screen? It shrinks and now they have to scroll. It's almost like that painless Facebook scroll. And it's gonna drive them crazy and they're not gonna remember what they read at the top, let alone what they're reading in the middle. They're only gonna remember at the bottom. So keep this in mind when you're writing your emails and really pay attention. This goes for normal communication with friends, family, colleagues, all of that, but also your newsletters. Don't forget about your newsletters because you're spending a lot of time on those. Your, your funnels, your marketing funnels, your sales funnels, 
you're spending a lot of time, money, energy, and stress on all of that. So you need to make it uh, easy for people to read because it's worth it and you have great content to share and people need to see it. But if you don't help them, then they're not going to want to see it. Tammy says, ain't nobody got time for all that. Exactly. So when you're writing emails, remember there's a person on the other side of that screen who's going to see it. Their chances are they're going to look at it on their small screen and their attention span, the average attention span, and I haven't looked it up to this date, but as of probably last year, I think it was 8.4 seconds. Now, I'm sure it's more like probably 5.4 by now, if not worse. So we have to make sure that when we're writing these emails, we pay attention to there's a human on the other side who's going to read this potentially. How can we get this as simple as possible and to the point? Not by highlighting, not by bolding everything and text and all of this because that throws us way off. Also, it's important to understand that when you're composing these emails, if you're writing in all caps, you're shouting at somebody. I feel like you're on the other end. I'll pretend, I'll, I'll play, role play here with Tammy. Tammy sends me the email, right? She sends me the one on the left. And this is what I'm hearing from Tammy. Hopefully this is a good example. Hey, Deepa, welcome. Yes, I try to even have two lines paragraphs. Yes, Deepa, exactly. Two line paragraphs. Three, maybe max, depending on how long those sentences are, you know, in general. But yes, Deepa hit it right on the nail. Two lines per, per paragraph is perfect. And Deepa, you have great emails. I do like them. Um, when it comes to this example, I'm going to role play here. Tammy's the sender. Thanks, Tammy, for being my example. Uh, <laughs> and she sent me the one on the left. This is my response when I see it. Tammy is saying, good morning. Please read this entire email now. That's the tone I'm hearing when I read that. Then it goes back to, your project is due tomorrow, May 3rd. And it needs, and it needs to have the following. Boom, 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 boom. What? Like, chill. I, I don't need all of that. I got plenty of other things I'm dealing with. I don't need you busting into my inbox and demanding all of this, right? Meanwhile, Tammy, the sender, is just hanging out on the other end and was just like, hey, good morning. Please read the entire email. Your project is due tomorrow, May 3rd, and it needs to have the following. Da -da 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 -da. And she's probably bopping along with her headphones on as she's typing it, right? Just do 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 um, so just keep that in mind. And, and Tammy did not send this email, by the way, if you're just tuning in, just want to make sure you know that. These are emails that I created just for this purpose. But just really understand that somebody on the other side is reading it. And if you're not in the right headspace to send an email, just don't send it. Give it a few minutes. Sometimes, and I know I've experienced this too, sometimes you get an email that makes you just go, really? Really? And you're like, I... I just sent it to you. And you want to respond like, really? But you can't. So take a breather, mark it as unread, and circle back to it in five or ten minutes or an hour. Take a walk. Take a little break. The important part is that you are in the right headspace so that you can pro properly co uh, communicate to your audience and so that they can properly respond to you in a timely manner. So really think about that when it comes to email. And uh, I hope that this example helped you. And if you need anything else, just let me know here on the page. And I doubt that I'll be here tomorrow. Saturday, I have a big event for one of my clients here locally. I'm super excited. We're having a big race. So I'll be out there covering the race for them. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'll try to tune in uh, and try to do a quick live on my page maybe so you guys can experience the excitement. Uh, Tammy says, laughing out loud, I ask myself, how does it sound before I send it? Yes, that's a good one, Tammy. Exactly. And how does it look? Because when we're talking about newsletters, you guys can send a test email to yourself. And where should you look at it? On your phone. Not in your inbox on your desktop, but in your inbox on your phone. That's the best way to do it. Uh, Deepa says, great tips. However, some people just don't read. Well, and that's true too, Deepa. 
<laughs> That's why we're trying to somewhat help them read by breaking things up, but it is true. Uh, some people just just don't read. <laughs> uh, so that, and that's a whole other episode where we have to start getting the video involved, which is another another thing I like to do. Actually, if you're a, a Hey Ed member, there's, uh, there's training on that. So uh, just let me know inside the network and I can tag you on that and share that with you. So anyway, you guys have a fantastic rest of the day. I'm also off to a networking event tonight. Uh, maybe, maybe I'll do a story from there. You can check out my stories later and we'll see. And if you need anything else, just let me know. Take care.